Today, using Apple Motion, we're gonna recreate the iconic MKBHD background. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this background and use it in your videos right now. The first thing we'll want to do is, of course, open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the Prodigy Browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're gonna select the Final Cut Generator, which works really great for backgrounds. Then going on over to the right-hand side, we'll locate the preset. I'm gonna set the preset to 4K at 2997, which is the same settings that MKBHD likes to upload in. Then you're gonna to wanna to set your duration to be something really long. In this instance, I've set it to 300 seconds. You can set it to however you like, but you wanna make sure it's a number that you're probably never gonna go beyond. This is going to help make your background last for infinity in your videos. From there, we'll go ahead and select open. The first thing we'll need to do is get a color backdrop. So going on over to the left-hand side, locate your generators and and locate the color solid. Click and drag this into your layers panel, then jump inside of your inspector. In your inspector, you can set this background to be whatever color you like. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to this orange color to match my branding. From there, we'll come on down next to this rectangle and click on this down arrow. We'll locate the circle tool, then we'll just click and drag to create a circle holding shift so that it's perfectly symmetrical. Then we'll go on over to the left hand side and locate the outline options which we will disable. Go ahead and leave the color as white for right now. We will change the color a little bit later. Selecting the circle, go up to the top right hand corner and locate the replicator. Clicking on that, that will create a replicated version of that circle. Go ahead and locate the size parameter on the left hand side. Clicking on this down arrow, we should see both a width and height. We'll just wanna set these to the same dimensions as our project. This is a 4K project, so that will be 3840 by 2160. If you're in a 1080 project, that will be 1920 by 1080. After that, we can go ahead and just click and drag this into position so it's directly in the center, and you can use the snapping guides to figure that out. Going to the very bottom, we'll locate the scale and we'll just drag these to be really quite small. It's up to however you want this to look. Then locating the columns and rows, go ahead and set your columns to something like 50 and your rows to something like 30. You can play around with these numbers to get it looking as dense as you like, but I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Coming on over to the left hand side, we can locate the color mode. Currently it is set to original, which means it's going to look exactly like the original circle we created. We can go ahead and change that over to pick from color range. What this is going to do is it's going to randomly assign a color to these different circles from a color range that we have down here. Clicking on this down arrow, we can see all of the colors that it's selecting from. So it's this light blue down to this dark blue. If we wanna have some nice color accents like what's found inside of MKBHD's backdrop, all we need to do is change one of these over to a nice dark gray color and change the other one to a nice accent color. So I'm gonna set it to this teal color. Now, if you don't want any sort of in-between colors, all you need to do is select the two gradients and we'll change the interpolation from continuous over to constant. Then we can do the exact same thing with the other color. So now you'll notice that if I click and drag this gray color, it's just a straight line with that color. There's no gradiated look to it. So you can adjust these to get however much of that accent color you want in your project. Bringing them closer together is of course going to make one more dominant than the other. Now that we have all of these points, we need to animate them. Select the replicator that has the points, go up to filter, go down to distortion and locate underwater. The underwater effect is going to give it this nice 3D wave effect like what you see on MKBHD's channel. If I push play, you'll see that the animation is playing out, but it's a little bit too severe for my liking and you'll notice that sometimes these dots are getting way stretched out. That is because of the refraction level. To adjust that, go ahead and go to the left hand side with that underwater selected and you'll see the refraction. Just drag that down so that your circles are far less stretched out, something like that. We could also adjust our size. So if you wanted the movements to be quite a bit larger, you could bring that size up and bring the speed way down to really closely match what MKBHD has. So if we push play, you'll see that we have this nice little wave effect happening over our backdrop. Now, of course, you can adjust the size and refraction levels to your liking to get it looking exactly as you want it, but I'll go ahead and leave it somewhere around here. 
Now you'll also notice that many of these dots are disappearing in MKBHD's video. What we will do is go over to our library. Scrolling down under our generators, you'll locate the clouds generator. I'm just going to click and drag this into our layers panel above everything. If we push play, you'll notice that these clouds are slowly animating through. We could actually speed this up and it's going to improve our effect. So we'll go into our inspector where we can locate this speed parameter. Go ahead and drag that all the way up to two. And now you can see the animation is playing out way more. Also, we could adjust the contrast on this gradient. We'll go ahead and expand out that gradient. And depending on if you want to have more dots visible or less dots visible, you can adjust the black area or the white area. If it's black, it's going to delete a dot. If it's white, it's going to reveal the dot. So you can play around with these settings later on to see what you like. From there, we can go ahead and disable the clouds so that they are completely invisible. And selecting our replicator, we can right click on it and select add image mask. From there, we can go ahead and click and drag these clouds into that image mask but now you'll see that all of these dots are revealed. So we need to adjust that. To fix that, go on over to the left-hand side and change the source channel. This is telling motion what is going to delete dots and what is going to leave dots there. We'll change it from alpha over to luminance. So now the white values of the clouds are bringing in dots and the black values are deleting dots. If you want to reverse that, you can go over to the mask blend mode and change it from add over to subtract. Then of course you can jump back into your clouds and adjust the contrast to get these dots looking exactly as you want them. Now if you don't want any of these dots to be halfway transparent, then you can go ahead and adjust that interpolation once more. So we could change it over to a nice constant color so that it's either on or it's off. This is really up to personal taste. I happen to like how some of these look when they're slightly faded. Finally, one last thing that I love with MKBHD's videos is he always has a lot of texture going on even in his background. Selecting the color solid, we can go up to our filters, go down to stylize and select add noise. Come on over to your mount and set it to something like 0.1 or less and change the type from white noise over to blue noise. We we'll want to make it monochrome so it's not introducing any other colors and we want to disable auto animate. It's going to be hard to see on YouTube but that has introduced a nice subtle texture onto this backdrop which really improves the animation in my opinion. So now that we've created this backdrop we want to make it so we can change all of the colors over inside of Final Cut Pro. So to do that go ahead and select your color solid and find this color option. Click on this down arrow and select publish. After that, we can locate our replicator and locate the gradient that we added earlier. We can right click on that gradient and select publish. That will push that also over into Final Cut Pro. Finally, we'll go into our underwater settings and publish all of these parameters. So again, we'll just click on the down arrow and publish each and every one of these. And finally, all we need to do is push Command S to save it. We can just call this MKBHD background and throw it into whatever category you like. I will create a new category and just call it tutorials and we'll push publish. To access our background, we'll open up Final Cut Pro, go inside of our generators, scroll down to the bottom where we'll see the category we created, this tutorials, and I can drag that down on my timeline. And you'll notice that we have this great looking animation of a background. But you'll also notice a large problem. This background lasts for five whole minutes and we don't want it to last that long whenever we bring it into Final Cut Pro. But we don't want to deal with any issues of it looping because if we only had this for something like 10 seconds, the loops wouldn't align and you would very clearly see when it's resetting. So let's go back into Apple Motion and adjust a couple things. Here in Motion, we'll scroll on to the very, very end of our project and we'll push Shift M. That's gonna give me this small green marker. Right clicking on that, we can select to edit the marker and we'll change the type from standard over to project loop end. That's telling Final Cut Pro this is where the project ends. And what that means is if we were to vastly shorten the length of this project, it wouldn't speed up the animations of the waves happening in the background. But we're still gonna have that issue where it lasts for five minutes inside of Final Cut Pro. So to adjust that, we'll go ahead and click on this icon, this stopwatch, and we'll go ahead and just change this over to be something like zero and we could do 10 seconds. Then if I push enter, 
our project is now only 10 seconds. But what's super important is that this project is still lasting for five whole minutes, which means we won't run into any looping issues. So if we jump back into Final Cut Pro and redrag this down on the timeline, you'll notice that it's only 10 seconds. But if I were to drag this way out past five minutes, you'll see here that we don't have any sort of looping issues until we hit that five minute value, which is somewhere in here. And just like that, you can see it reset. So that is how you can create the MKBHD backdrop. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you how to recreate the intro from one of MKBHD's videos. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.